In multi-sim, it's easy to combine simulated and measurement results in the same instrument. Let's see how to do this with the Bode Analyzer. Here I have an RLC bandpass filter. The filter input is over here, V in, and the filter output is V out. My DAC is connected to the circuit input on analog input channel 0 and the output on analog input channel 1. Now the input is actually derived from analog output 0 and I have a voltage follower in between to strengthen the current drive of the analog output from its 2 milliamp maximum value. So I need a little bit more current drive to make this circuit work properly. Here I have the power supply connections for the op amp voltage follower. And finally I need to connect the negative sides of the analog inputs, 0 and 1, to analog ground. Here's a quick photo of the physical circuit. Here's my RLC circuit. There's the op amp voltage follower. My signal is coming in on AO0 goes into the voltage follower, out of the voltage follower. I'm monitoring that voltage with AI0, and AI1 is monitoring the output. Here I have the negative sides of the analog inputs grounded, and here I have my 15 and minus 15 volt supplies. Now to make this work, you have to actually connect your NI MIDAC before you set up the project. So we'll set up the version called NI MyDAC Design. And you'll see that Multisim then places a representation of the MyDAC signal connectors as well as the MyDAC DMM. And it also automatically places a connection for the ground terminal. Let me take just a quick moment here to place my RLC bandpass filter circuit. Now I'll connect the circuit input to analog output 0. Then connect analog input 0 to monitor the actual input voltage and then analog input 1 to man monitor the filter output. I'll then ground the negative sides of the analog inputs. And at this point I can start up the Bode Analyzer. Now this is the same Bode Analyzer that you would use in a standalone cap capacity with the MIDAC, except notice here you can choose whether or not you're using simulated or real data. Now in case you encounter this where you run the simulation and nothing appears, Go ahead and simply open the function generator. You don't have to do anything specific with it, just have it open. That way it gives Multisim the ability to apply the um, stimulus signal to your circuit. Let me improve the frequency resolution here just a bit. I'll do 10 points or 10 steps per decade. and you also have control of the mapping. Defaults to decibels or logarithmic mapping. I'm going to switch this to linear mapping for the rest of this demonstration. All right, simply go down here, select the MIDAC, hit run, and at this point it's just like you're running the Boney Analyzer in standalone mode. So I'm collecting data directly from the circuit. And this is great because now you can make a head-to-head -head comparison between the physical measurement and the simulation. Now you'll notice that there's a reasonable agreement about the overall shapes, but the values themselves have a reasonable amount of difference here. This has to do with the fact that the inductor actually has a pretty sizable amount of series winding resistance. Turns out that when I make a ohmmeter measurement with my 3.3 millihenry inductor I get about 10 ohms. 
So I'm going to place a 10 ohm resistor in series with my inductor, and then we'll improve the modeling accuracy. I now switch this back to simulation data, rerun the simulator, and wow, that's a big improvement in the modeling accuracy. We see that the results are very, very close to each other in both magnitude and phase.